G'day guys, Lemon Eating Cow here, and I'm back playing Final Fantasy XV. And today I have a guide for you on Elemancy. I know it's a little bit late, I should have done it when the uh, game first came out, but now I think I have a better understanding of it. I've seen a lot of questions lately just asking basically, like, how the hell do I Elemancy? Uh, so this is in by no means going to be a completely comprehensive guide, but I just want to go over you with you what I've learned and hopefully after that you've got a pretty good grasp on it and you'll be adept at creating your own spells. So the very most basic thing of Elemancy is that you need elements and they can be absorbed at any camp point. They will have uh, deposits laying around them, a lightning deposit, ice deposit and a fire deposit. These are also at certain points through the story and all you do is walk up to them and press X to absorb. Now I'm at full at the moment but that's only because I have a skill from the Ascension Grid under the Magic tab, which lets me absorb more elements, or elemancy, I guess, from the uh, elemental deposits in each camp area. And you can expand this, I think, two, three times, actually. And I found that incredibly useful. The nodes do respawn, or the deposits do respawn, but they can take some time, so trying to maximize the draw every time is definitely the way to go. So once you have enough elementsy to be satisfied, I would recommend, I usually always get 99 elements before I go into crafting. Come into your elementsy menu, and this is what it looks like. Um, on the left there, you can see we have our elements. They're 99 of each. They're all maxed out. And in the bottom there is a grayed out catalyst tab. Now we'll go over that later and that's sometimes what people get confused on. On the right here you can see it's our magic flasks. Now the magic flasks are picked up during the main story and also on some side quests. You get a certain amount during the first playthrough and then if you want to get more slots then you'll have to play through the game on New Game Plus to get more of those. So each magic, magic flask is basically a bottle for a spell that we can put in, or a, a slot. So you can only make as many spells as magic flasks you have. I think you start the game with either two or three, you have a fairly low amount, but generally I burn through it pretty quick, so it's, it's not really that big a deal. Anyway, once you have picked a magic flask, just hit X on it, you'll come across the menu on the left. And this is where we can select the different elements for our spell. And that's done by pressing L1 or R1. So R1 increases the amount of uh, element you want to put in that spell, and L1 takes it away. So for this, if we wanted a fire spell, we'd simply put one in fire. Now for every point that you put into this, it increases the potency. Down the bottom there, you can see we've got a fire spell and times three, so we have three casts of that fire spell, and the potency is at 31. I believe my potency would be slightly higher because I'm using a skill from the Ascension Grid, which gives, on crafting, it gives my uh, potency a boost. So, where is it? I will find it in a second. Yeah, here, extra power craft. So for 99 AP, you can make it so that when you're crafting spells, it'll give you an extra 30 potency. So remember, when I'm crafting things, my potency will be slightly higher or slightly less than yours, depending. You can actually come down here and get the 50. And down here, you can come and get the 100 for the 999 AP. Now, it's important to note that these won't stack with each other. So at maximum, you're only going to be adding 100 potency to the spells that you create. It won't be 30 plus 50 is 80, plus 100, which 180. It'll only be the 100. Now, back to the Elemency. Uh, we've put the one fire in there, so we've got the potency of one or of 31. And for each point we put in, we're going to get an extra point of potency up to 99. And you saw there the fire spell change slightly, and that is because once you go over a potency of 100 with any spell, it's going to upgrade into the next tier of spells. So it's the classic Final Fantasy tier system. The lowest level of spells is the just the base name, like Fire, Ice or Lightning, or Blizzard and Lightning. Uh, so here we have the Fire, but as soon as we go to potency 100, it becomes Fire, which is the next tier of spells. And that's going to increase the intensity, so uh, the hit 
of the spell or the power of the spell and also the range so you get a bigger blast radius when you do it and that will also the spell will also level up or uh, go into the next tier once it hits 200 it'll become the fire gah or the blizzard gah or the lightning gah or the thunder gah sorry uh lightning nuka anyway um yeah, so we're going to pump 99 into here, and you can see we've got a potency of 129, which you can come right down now and hit craft, and you'll get a three casts of a 129 potency spell. But that's not really good for, good enough for us, so we want to try and get the potency of that as high as possible. Higher the potency, the more damage, so you definitely want to pump that potency. So what I'm going to do is chuck in some ice. Now, you can see it's not really affecting the spell too much. It's not changing the element or anything. That'll come in a bit later. But for every every two points of that that we put in, we'll get one point into our potency. So two, one, two, one, two, one, on and on. So we can pump that all the way up to 99. And you can see now we've got 178 potency. Now, they're at 99 each, so they're even. But the the spell still remains a fire that is because the fire is the dominant uh the dominant magic in this or dominant dominant element in this uh craft so it's going to remain fire but once we add one more lightning it's going to change the dynamic of the spell completely so we'll put in one lightning there and you can see the spell actually changed to a unicast spell now a unicast spell is it will randomly cast fire ice or lightning of that potency when we cast the spell so completely random each time you cast it and that can be useful i mean a lot of enemies don't have an abs absorb or a an immunity to any spell skill so sometimes it's better just to fully pump your spells the most potency you can but other times you really want to specify so if we really wanted to keep this a fire spell but we wanted to get the maximum potential out of our potency or you wanted to balance your elements you don't have 99 of each then you just have to remember the fact that for it to remain a fire spell 50 percent of the spell still needs to remain fire so what i mean by that at the moment we have 99 points into fire so for it to remain fire it has to have well 99 points uh has to make up half the spell so we are going to here we'll add 49 ice and we're going to go 50 lightning and we'll see what that does to the spell oh sorry overshot a little bit there so there we've got 178 potency but we have quite a mix of spells we've still got the 99 fire we've got 49 ice and we got 50 lightning so between the ice and the lightning there is 99 points and there's 99 points fire so it's still 50% fire and 50% the other two elements but as soon as we go over that 50% ratio we'll put in the one lightning which tips it over now we've got 100 lightning and ice and only 99 fire so the balance is in favor of the ice and lightning which means it'll now become a unicast spell and then again if we dominate on one spell we take away all the fire and then we pump up the lightning then as long as you keep up that balance it'll shift to a thunder spell so it's all about maintaining the uh the 50 percent balance or if you just purely want a 99 spell then we can just make it 99 fire but yeah it's it may seem complicated, but it's just about maintaining that balance. And you'll really, you'll get a feel for it. Just play around in this menu, save your game beforehand, see what different items do. Anyway, that is the basics of the elements. So I am just going to chuck in one fire here, and then we're going to take a look at catalysts. Once you put at least one element in, you can come down to the fourth circle here, and that is the catalyst window. Once we press X on there, we're taken to the... Uh, curative or the restorative menu you can also press r1 to go to the ingredients menu r1 again to go to the treasures menu now these catalysts add extra effects to the spell and also increase the amount of casts that you can have on the spell if you use a certain amount of them 
So here you can see a potion, and in the bottom left hand corner now it says says heal cast. Now that is a healing spell that when you cast it, it'll do the fire, because it's heal cast fire. Uh, it'll do fire damage to the enemy, but it'll also heal you basically like a potion, but it's depending on the potency of the spell. Like I said before, the higher potency of the spell, the more effective the effects are going to be of that spell. And much like the other elements, we can change the amount of potions that we want to put into the spell. Now this won't affect the element of the spell at all, it'll just affect the effect of the spell. Uh, so we're going to put in... Well, we'll start with zero, actually, or one, rather. You can see healing level down there is at 25, and for each potion we put in, we're going to increase that level by 25. Now, the level is the amount of base heal or uh, effect that it's going to give, and potency is going to affect the damage. So if we put in a four potions, it's going to take us to healing level 99. Now, with four potions, it should be 100, but the level actually caps out at 99. So any potions beyond that won't affect the healing level, but the more potions we put in, up to, I think, 20 affects it. Once you put in 20, it'll give us fire times four. So it increased the casts that we have in each of these flasks. So if we put in 99, you can see there, it's climbing up to a total of seven. And depending on how rare and good the catalyst is that we put in, you'll get more amount of casts out of it. So if we come across here to our menu again, and we're going to use a high potion this time, you can see even one high potion gives us a healing level of 50, so it's more effective right off the bat. If we go 2, it gives us that top out at 99 off 2 potions. So you can weigh up the cost and figure out if this is more effective, but the main uh, the main use of using a higher tier item is that you'll get more casts out of it. So if we put 99 high potions in, we get 10 casts of that fire. Whereas if we had the potion, 99 only gave, a, gave us 7 casts. So it's more effective in that way. And like I said, you have to weigh up if the costs are worth the extra casts and things like that. So now I'll just quickly go over the different catalyst effects you can get and just the basics of what they do and also the common ingredients that you might use to get them of course it's not going to be every ingredient but it's just a, a general selection of them so we have dual cast which lets you cast up to two times with the one spell cast uh, if it is a unicast spell and you're using the dual cast modifier each time that spell hits it'll be a different spell so it's random between the three then we have the Tricast, which is a cast of three times, the quad cast, which is a cast of four times, and the quint cast, which is the highest of the multicast, which is five times. Then we have the venom cast, which uses uh, poison, and it has a chance of inflicting poison on the enemy. This is great for some boss battles, uh, as it just ticks down their HP over the duration while you run around. Then we have stop cast which has a chance of inflicting stop on the enemy, which causes them to be immobilized and not have any actions. Then we have Curse Cast, which inflicts Mollified on the enemy, which drops their attack as well as doing damage on them. Then we have the Kill Cast. This is a cast of death, which has the chance of instantly killing an enemy, no matter what their HP is. The next one we've got is Xperia Cast. Xperia Cast is a, a spell that you use, and every time you cast it on an enemy, it gives you a base or a fixed amount of experience. Now, I've made a video on the uh, ins and out of Xperia Cast, so I don't want to go into it too much here, but if you want to check that out, the link is in the description below, or it'll be at the end of the video. Then we have the Free Cast. The Free Cast lets you have an extra... Uh, charge or an extra cast of the spell without actually expending the maximum number of those casts. Then we have fail cast. Fail cast has a really powerful cast if it gets off, but the trade-off is it also has a chance to not go off at all and completely fail. Then we have power cast, which powers up the spell greatly, but you also lose the range on that spell. 
And then we have the most powerful spell, which is Maxi Cast. And that is the one that lets you break the damage limit of 9,999 on spells. And if you have enough magic power and the enemy's weak to the attack that you're using, then you have the potential to do up to 99,999. So this is by far the most powerful spell if used correctly. So guys, that was a bit long-winded, but I hope I covered most of the stuff about Elemancy. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions, suggestions, or uh, just general comments, leave them in the comments section below. And please don't forget to subscribe. This has been Lemon Eating Cow. Moo.